Hi, do you have an Ender 3? Do you think it can print better? In today's video, I'm gonna show you five mods to improve your printer. See you inside. So today I wanna to talk about modifying your printer, upgrading it to make the printer better and easier for you to use. So today we're gonna to go through five of my most favorite mods to do to the Ender 3, to create all these Ender 3. Now this, I looked, will work on your Ender 3 original, Pro, or the V2. So these mods are pretty simple to install. They're pretty cost effective. I think the most expensive one is, depending on tools, maybe $25. So they're really good mods to uh, consider doing to your printer. They'll make things a lot easier. And it'll make bed leveling easier. It'll make sound better. It'll make wear and tear better on the printer and just kind of make ease of use of your PLA and everything else. So here we go with number five. Number five is the Z-Rod Stabilizer. This is a pretty, this guy costs about 10 or 12 bucks um, on Amazon, link down in the description. It's a relatively easy install. You just slip them down onto the Z-Rod and get the you get it down in place, get the T-bolts in place, and you screw it on, and you just stabilize your Z-Rod instead of it being out there and wobbling or things like that that can cause issues with the rod. Pretty simple install. You just gotta tighten two bolts, and that's it. You're done. On to number four. So, my number four upgrade is the extruder. Upgrade to a metal extruder mount on your extruder motor. The Ender 3s all come with plastic, even the new V2. I'm not sure about the pros, but most your Ender 3s, they come with just the plastic extruder, which was kind of a surprise because they put the metal one on the CR10 V2, but not the Ender 3 V2. This guy costs about $15. It's a relatively easy upgrade to install. You just gotta undo four pins, put the bolts, put this guy together. Now your motor will fall off when you do this, so you gotta make sure you get that back up of um, you hold that in place when you do it, but a relatively upgrade. Um, the video link down in the description below on how to install this. On to number three. Number three, one of my most favorite upgrades is the sound dampener. It's two metal pieces that go on your motors, on your Y and X axis. <clears throat> you can put it on the extruder stepper motor, but you don't have to. It goes in place and it goes between the frame and that motor. That rubber helps stop the vibrations from the motor reverberating to the frame and reducing noise. Now, on the Ender 3, most of the Ender 3s are actually, the gears inside are actually pressure held in place. They're not um, bolted in place. So what you have to do is you do have to purchase the proper gears. And I recommend getting yourself a gear puller to be able to pull off the old gears so you can put this one on, put your belt, and have that damper and have everything the proper distance so you don't have any rubbing or any other issues. Um, if you're interested in installing, installing the sound dampeners, the, there's a video that I did down in the description below. On to number two. So number two for me is the bed spring. The factory bed springs to me have always seemed kind of weak. Um, I've kind of struggled with them to level them, so I usually actually replace the bed springs. This is a $7 replacement. You get about eight of these in a bag. It's really easy to do. Just undo your bolt here. As pressure comes off, these become real easy to undo. Just like that. And just pick up your bed. And bada bing, bada boom. There's three of your springs right there. Um, they've always kind of seemed like a cheaper grade spring. Um, the back spring is a little bit harder, but once you get that off, take your new spring, slide them on there. Uh, the, these springs are a lot stiffer, so they'll tend to be a little bit better. When getting this done, just slide them onto your bed panel springs, just like that. Wind it back up on your chair. Oops. Can be a little bit of a daunting task. And line up your screw, your bolts back into their holes. I need one more of these guys to achieve my task. Oops, there's already one out there. So I will lift up on this side, get him on his bolt, 
All four are done. Now, the only caveat to this is, you are gonna have to re-level your bed. It's unfortunate, but it's what you gotta do. Then once you're done, you just put your screw back on. Which sometimes is easier said than done. Some people will tend to uh, turn the corner on the side to do this. So when you got four of those, you gotta put back together, tighten down your screws, bed level, boom. You've got better, tighter strings, springs on your bed. It makes it easier to level. On to number one. And on to number one. So my, I never have cared for the printer spool being up top and having the spool go, the filament going in a loop to get here. I never did like that. Um, so, off the inverse, you can find this model relatively easy. You can print a new arm that will mount on your frame here. All you gotta do is take the cap off the end piece here. This guy just slides right on. Very nice and smooth. You just take your Allen wrench, undo this guy. You'll have to undo the T-bolts this time. And this handy dandy little piece has the slots for the T-bolts right in it. So you just slip those in, like so. You bring your arm over onto it. I wanna make sure I've got this facing the way that I want it, which is actually this way. And you just get this guy lined up together and get it all tight together. But what this does is it brings the PLA down to the side of the extruder. So not only is your printer really not really tall anymore, but it does make your printer wider. So then you just slide this guy into place, like so. Uh, that fell out. But now your PLA spool can go here on the side, and it is basically almost a complete straight shot as the extruder moves your filament moves in. That's one of my favorite ones. Plus, like I said, I don't like my printer being very tall. Um, in an upcoming video, you'll see my actual printing rig where this guy's gonna move down into. But basically, it made my printer wider, but it shortened it, got my spool off to the side, and it keeps the spool feeding in line with the extruder instead of a big loop that would be coming down from here. That's my number one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you like any of these mods the links to the parts will be down in the description also videos corresponding to these upgrades i appreciate your guys time hit that like button hit that subscribe button and we will see you next time hey guys i wanted to throw in this one last bonus um this is the honorable mention of the part list the mods for the printer but this is also a kit that I think you really should invest in if you are gonna get into 3D printing. Because as you grow and get better with 3D printing and want to advance and make more modifications or grow or just plain maintenance on your printer, um, things tend to wear out, screw heads tend to strip. So I recommend getting the, the Metric M uh, screw sets. Um, this one comes from Amazon. It has the standard bolts and multiple sizes from M3 through, M, through M5. Um, and also the T-nut set that can go with that. That way you can mount anything onto your frame, um, just like you saw me mount this arm down here and mount into here, that was the T-nuts, um, and grow your frame. Like this is a new Ender 3V2. The older one, you know, you got the power supply if you wanna move that somewhere else on the frame, if you wanna add an octoprint or something like that. Depending on what case and modification you wanna use, these are really handy to have around. And also, like I said, maintenance happens. Screws strip out, you need replacements every once in a while. These kits are definitely worth it. Links are down in the description below. And thank you guys. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you enjoyed what you saw in this video today. We will see you in the next video.